on me. <laughs> Hi, my husband's being a little silly. He's taking my video, so um, I'm going to hand it to him in just a second. Um, this is Tamara Rubin. I'm Tamara Rubin, and I'm at home today in Portland, Oregon. Um, and we're here testing some fidget spinners as a follow-up. Um, these are the spinners we tested the other day. And I have some new information uh, and new ideas I wanted to, to share with you. So I have my rented um, X-ray fluorescence spectrometer. This is these instruments used cost fifteen or twenty thousand. New cost as much as fifty thousand. I went the brand new one, the XL three or XL five T, but I've been told it doesn't have a consumer goods uh, module yet, and that is fifty thousand <clears throat> without all the software modules, which cost about three thousand each. Anyway, so I rent it for a day or two, and then I test consumer goods for people uh, and share it on videos or on my blog, which is tamrarubin.com. And I'm going to be uh, just following up on these fidget spinners. I'm going to turn the camera around so my husband can take the pictures. Hold on. All right, here, um, turn it around and take, take my picture. All right, so um, the other day we tested these three fidget spinners. Um, this one was lead free, this one had lead, and this one was lead free. What was interesting to me is my son played with this one for two minutes before it broke. It basically fell apart within two minutes and I can see you know why these um, are an issue uh, in terms of the components getting swallowed or whatever um, like literally two minutes and then I even though this one had lead my son was so excited about it I said okay as long as you don't put it in your mouth you can play with it for a, for a little tiny bit and um, just I wanted to see how he interacted with it and this one broke within one minute of my son playing with it so what happened was he dropped it and this little clear glass, well plastic, whatever, uh, um, kind of lens fell off of the bit on the, um, on the light. And so one of the concerns we had was whether or not the lead was in the battery or in the, in the, in the actual fidget spinner itself. So now we can test it and see if it's in the battery or in the spinner itself. So I can test the side of the fidget spinner and that'll give us a little more information as to, um, whether or not there is lead in the paint or in the substrate of the toy. So I'm going to test this. Um, let's see, I'm going to do it like this so that it's at an angle. Um, you can put it on me, Len, up here. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to do a 30 second test. And one thing, oh, since he's got a close-up, I'm going to show you. I'm, these are my necklaces that my son made. It's the uh, one in three. Uh, basically, one in three children in the United States has had a blood level of 2.5 or higher in their lifetime. And there's no safe level of lead um, in a child's blood. So I've been making these as little advocacy uh, outreach um, necklaces. And I've... Uh, oh, Bernice, put it in your shed. Uh, nope, not right now. I'm working. Step back. But it's in your shed. <laughs> I need it. Okay, you are live on Facebook. So can you go back and do what you were doing? I need something that's in your shed. Okay, not right now. You're gonna have to wait. I'm busy. Give me all this. Give me all these fidget spinners. I'm not giving you the fidget spinners. I'm testing them for lead. Okay. <laughs> Let me one thing that's in your shed. It's mine. Nope. You're gonna have to wait until I'm done. No. Okay. And that's my son Charlie. He's eight. Um, did you get a good shot of Charlie? Mm -hmm. Um. So. This, the back of this, which was a little wiggly, tested positive for four lead at 334 parts per million. And then for mercury at 155 parts per million. Uh, that's plus or minus 21 on the mercury and plus or minus 28 on the lead. And so this has lead regardless of the fact that there's a battery in it. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to test was, you can see almost, you can see the solder points on um, there. And those are probably leaded. I'm going to uh, test that right now. I have to test it down because it's so small. They, you can, you, the, the recommendation in general is to test these things with the instrument up, although the instrument ha does have a stand, so it can test down, like soil samples, down, facing downward. So on small items where it can't be placed at an upright angle, it's appropriate. Okay, so here's a really good answer to a really important question. I said, well, I don't know if the 5,000 or 3,000 or 2,000 I was getting was um, from the battery or not. So now we know because this battery came in at 19,500 parts per million lead mm. on the solder points. 
So the amount of lead that's considered safe for a child is anything under 90 parts per million. And this has 19,500. Now, um, here we can go back and it's on me there. Um, so here's the point that, that's really interesting. Um, people will say, oh, well, it's the battery. The kids aren't supposed to chew on a battery. And it, it, this, this, if a child swallowed, it would poison the child. And um, the thing is, the batteries are excluded from the CPSC legislation um, as long as they're contained and not available in the toy. And this is actually, it, it popped out within one minute of him playing with it. And 19,000 parts per million lead is a super lot of lead. So I'm just gonna, I wanted to um, do another quick thing. This is a Q-tip holder. You, okay, you can have this one. It's lead-free. Go, go away. <laughs> um, thanks, Donna. Um, so here's a lead check swab. These have been sitting around in my purse for like six or eight months, and they're a little dirty. And I put them in a Q-tip box because it doesn't crush as easily as their packaging. And as long as there is, um, can you get off the table, Charlie? <laughs> as long as there is um, liquid and powder in the package, can you get a shot of that okay? Mm -hmm. Um, then you put the paper sleeve on and the paper sleeve says crush and crush. So you crush the powder sleeve and cut, crush the liquid. And those are two vials. And when you shake it, it turns yellow on the inside. And then you rub it on the thing that, um, well, you first, you squeeze out a little bit of what, uh, of the drop of the drop. Oh, that made it turn on. And then you rub it to see if there's lead on the surface that's accessible. And, um, even though this is just a tiny bit of lead on these solder points, um, it's very high lead, and if it turns pink at all, um, it's lead, and it's turning pink right away, um, even though the metal is just tiny, tiny bits. So there's no question that this is available to a child if it popped off within one minute of playing on it, and there's no question that, um, that the lead is on uns unsafe level. Um, and it, so it's like, it's erroneous to say, oh, well, it's just the battery. The battery's inside. You know, that's not okay. Um, one thing, a second thing I wanted to do is show you again, how we do this. Um, I'm going to do another one of these. So again, you look and make sure when you open it that there's the powder and the liquid, and then you crush and you crush. And if you want to test multiple things, you can squeeze a drop of the liquid onto a Q-tip. It's kind of orangey yellow. And then you can rub on the product and um, and see if there's any pink uh, or red. And it's so it's looking like this metal. Well, I don't know actually. It, it might have some of the lead from the battery because that's that stuff's like you know pure lead on the end of the battery because it is turning a little pink on the metal here. I'm going to do another XRF test to um, see. Look, it's spinning. Yay. <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to do a test um, to see if there is... Um, hold on a second. I'm going to try and prop this. Um, I, sometimes I prop things on a pillow to make them easier to get. To see if this tests positive for lead without the battery in the cavity. And that will give us a good sense of things. You can put the camera on Charlie for a second because he wants an audience somehow. I just found out something really cool. What did you find out? It makes an awesome noise when you blow on it and it's spinning. Aha, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Sounds like a plane propeller. And that's a lead free one, so we're good there. Um, <laughs> all right, so this, um, it's gonna take a minute. It just, because he jumped on the table. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do this another quick run again. Um, it was registering on the inside of the cavity. Um, up to 6,000 parts per million lead. So I'm just doing a quick retest. And maybe let retest. people know that you've tested the purse, the background. Oh yeah, I've tested the purse. Um, and the interesting thing is not only is this super high lead, right now it's coming, it, when you test things in multiple spots, it's going to have different levels just because it's, things are, you know, not um, consistent in the materials um, necessarily. So uh, one test might be close to 5,000. So anyway, the crazy, crazy thing about this fidget spinner is that it's the lead level is 2,452 parts per million, plus or minus 183, and the mercury level is 1,562 uh, parts per million, plus or minus 135. So that's super high mercury for a toy, um, and I am glad we found this, and I won't be letting my son play with this.
I think that's everything right now about the, this fidget spinner because basically we confirmed that there was lead in the battery at 19,500 parts per million. We showed that the battery, the case pops off and the um, battery becomes available to a child immediately. We showed that there's lead in the substrate here. We showed that it tests positive with a swab. So all across the board, this thing's really dangerous. It's um, a fail. It's a fail. Um, and I just want to say that um, if you support my advocacy work at all, if you like what I do, I, I really need your help right now. We have a GoFundMe up right now, gofundme.com um, forward slash lead safe mama. And right now I'm trying to raise about $1,000 for uh, one attorney because I have to have attorneys defending my advocacy work right now because there's some big stuff going down. Um, and then I have another uh, pair of attorneys that need a $10,000 retainer. So if there's any chance that you can help out with a donation on my GoFundMe or if you're interested in maybe loaning me some money to help with the attorney's fees or you know someone that might be able to help or I can come to your house and we can do an event and you know raise money, anything creative, I'm, I, I'm willing to work hard for the money I always do um, so I really need help right now um, being able to defend my advocacy work so I can keep doing this kind of stuff especially the consumer goods and product testing and like not have the, the pushback from industry that I tend to have like repeatedly because I'm a mom in Portland who is just happening to use an XRF and testing things for lead and finding lots of scary things like lead in baby bottles and lead in sippy cups and things like that anyway thank you very much and my website is tamarubin.com and you can also email me at Tamarubin at Mac.com and I'll get back to all your questions shortly and stay tuned because Carissa and I are doing Gorilla XRF testing today at Walmart and um, Pier 1 and maybe Home Depot if we have time so uh, check in out your Facebook live and then we'll repost those videos on the blog too thanks again bye bye hi Avi